Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This is part three in a series of videos about using this material to 3D print this that can fly like this. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And check out our website for this model and others, as well as printing configurations for different materials. This is the pica I'm building with the foaming lightweight PLA. It is a simple three servo build and will have a two piece wing and a removable tail easy to pack. In part one we printed all the parts and gathered all the pieces. In part two we glued the airframe together. Now we are ready to add the radio, finish the control surfaces, and get it ready to fly. Time to pick an RC airplane transmitter, and one with a sailplane mode is helpful. My old high-tech Eclipse 7 had an easy competition sailplane configuration, similar to Spectrum, JR, and Futaba. In the past couple of years, I've migrated to FR Sky and have been using the Mike Shellum programs available on the website rcsoar.com. There are templates for several different glider and powered glider configurations. I'm using a modified DLG configuration on an X9 Lite. A pain to program compared to my high tech, but easy to buddy box with my X9D. Still hoping to get my son out flying. I'm going to pair it with this R6 receiver and AAA battery pack. It's good to plug in and test your servos and program before installing anything in the plane. Time to lay out the fuselage and use the radio gear placement to minimize extra balance weight. You can spin more for lighter gear and tune additional balance weight. Your choice. The approximate balance point for just the fuselage is 15 to 17 millimeters behind the front wing bolt. As you add elements like the push rod and the tail fin control horns, you can adjust the placement of the receiver and the battery. In the end, I push the battery and receiver as far forward as possible. Since I'm only using one servo for the tail, I'm going to glue the control horns to the tail fins before activating the hinges. This helps keep the set position of the horn the same for both sides. Check that the control horns fit the 1x4 carbon. File as necessary. These are a little loose, but that's okay. Add the control horn carbon to each fin. It should stick out 4 to 5 millimeters. Add a drop of glue to tack in place. Stand on in and add a drop more should wick down the length. If you're using a metal clevis, a flat blade screwdriver is a handy tool to hold it open. Add both control horns to the clevis such that the flats are together. Then bend the horns apart a little wishbone style to give them some flex. Mount the fins back on the fuselage and put the control horns on the carbon. With a little sideways pressure on the horn, it's ready to glue. And doing this upside down keeps the glue in the right place. 
glue the other side too. This will tack it in place and you can add more glue later. I'm also going to mark the position of the clevis with the rear of the fuselage for reference. Now this is the hardest step for me. Carefully remove the clevis without dislodging the horns. You can always put it back on and tack it again. Then you can pull the fins out and add a drop of glue to the top side on both. The lightweight PLA bends easily, so activating the fin hinge only takes a little work. A light scoring of the bottom side and bending back and forth is all it takes. Filing, bending, filing, and bending until you get the hinge movement you want. The aileron on the wing sections needs to be freed up on both ends. Clean up the end gaps of any loose material. Score the hinge line with a file. and start bending back and forth. Bend a little, file a little, bend some more, file some more until you get the feel of the hinge line that you want. All the way up and all the way down. Moves pretty easy. Now it's ready for some silicone. With the lightweight PLA, I've been using this clear exterior grade silicone. It's capable of 300% elongation and is easy to bend. One tube is good for many planes, but don't use past its expiration date or it likely will not dry. Have a paper towel handy. Open the hinge and apply a thin bead of silicone to the hinge line. I use my pinky finger to wipe off the excess. I do the bottom side first out of habit, not sure if there's a right or wrong way. Flip it over and do another thin layer. Once dry, this encapsulates the hinge line, making it quite sturdy, but flexible enough for full movement. Do the same thing for the ailerons. Bottom and top. If there are gaps or slots in the hinge line, you can use tape to back the opening while the silicone dries. After about a half hour to an hour, the silicone should be set, and you can remove the tape and flex the hinge a couple of times. With the hinges ready, we can move on to servos and push rods. For this build, I'm adding the aileron servo after gluing. Straighten the wire and push it through the pass-through. With some backlight, you can see where the end is. Spin the wire to get it to the next section. You can also use a piece of carbon strip or stiff wire to fish the wire through. Till the connector is in the opening.
Then the servo should drop into the pocket. Connect the servo to the radio, add the control arm, and check the full motion for clearance. Don't forget to add the control arm retaining screw. I then use hot glue to tack the servo in place. Little dabs here and there, not big puddles. Next, I'm drilling out the control arm to the .045 pushrod wire size I'm using for the ailerons. A Z-bin added to one end of the wire. And an easy connector on the other end. Add the retainer. Press it on with some pliers. Add the screw. Then you can flip on the radio and adjust for the perfect neutral position for the aileron. Cut off the excess wire. You can also clip the excess off the control arm at this time. I use hot melt to attach the servo covers. Check the fit. Mark the edges. I add a bead around the servo and out to the edge of the cover. Drop the cover on and press in place. I also add a screw in opposite corners just to be sure. This side is ready. Do the same to the other side. Now for the elevator servo and pushrod. So for this build, I chose to use an O32 music wire and a 2x1 carbon tube for a sheath. Z-bend on the servo end. And a brass threaded coupler on the other end, soldered on. It's almost a straight shot from the servo to the tail and the carbon is a little stiffer than the clear sheath from Dubro. From the Z-bend in to the brass coupler is about 595 to 600 millimeters, with about an inch of travel. Use the tail center push rod holder and feed the assembly through the fuse. The carbon OD is smaller than the holder, so I wrap the sheath end with tape so it just fits the tail holder. Mount the elevator servo and hook up the push rod. Make sure everything works the way you want. You can even add the clevis. Align the mark I added with the fuse. Then I mix up some five minute epoxy and drip it in from the access hole. The tape on the sheath keeps the epoxy from wicking into the moving parts of the push rod. Once dry, you're ready to reassemble the whole plane. With the whole plane together and everything plugged in and ready to fly, check the balance. There are raised features on the bottom of the wing at the CG point. Lift the plane up at these features. If the tail drops, then it's tail heavy. I notch the radio tray to move the battery as far forward as possible, and bunched the excess servo wires as far forward too. I also wanted to try trading out the metal clevis for a plastic one. It's only about a half gram lighter, but pretty easy to trade out with the metal clevis. A half gram saving in the tail works out to reducing the balance weight by another full gram. It was fun to try, but maybe not worth the time. Even still, I needed to add 3 grams of lead to get it to balance right. And with everything taped in place so it doesn't move around, you can check it again. Nose heavy is way more forgiving for a maiden flight. CG is very important for the pika. Ready to fly at 371 grams. 
With the CG a hair nose heavy, I trim the tail so the top of the rudder vaders are flat with the front section. Then six millimeters up, six millimeters down at the trailing edge root. Ailerons, I start with 10 millimeters up and 10 millimeters down and then trim in differential. Flaps should go 45 degrees easily. More is possible. First flights can seem daunting, but remember, you can always just print another. Hopefully, this relieves some of the anxiety of throwing out. I'm also working on more mods, like this tow hook for a bungee launch for you Flatlanders in an upcoming video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.